It's opening day. That means the Cubs are finally going to play, and it'll be against the World Series champion Texas Rangers. I got a great guest to help us preview this 2024 campaign. David Kaplan's going to be on. So guys, like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Hit the bell so you know when we're live, and let's get this party started right here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. All right, what do you say? There he is, the cat man. What's up, brother? Mix, great to be with you, man. My guy, I really, really always enjoy talking baseball with you. You and I think a lot alike on a lot of things. Not everything, but a lot. Yeah, no, I'm a big fan of yours, too. And what people might not realize is that uh, our spring training broadcast still goes down as the greatest at Cubs.com history in our mind. Remember that? that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we had, had a great, we did have a great time, man. We did. All right, well, it's great, man. It's wonderful to see you. I love this time of year, and I couldn't think of a better person to come on and just talk about what we have going into the regular season than you. Of course, you know you've covered the Cubs for a long time. You do a fantastic job on your channel. And um, on the radio every day. So thank you for doing this. And, and let's Thanks talk. Yeah, brother. Let's talk about the the 2024 Cubs. I mean, just right off the bat, what are your expectations for this team? To win the division. They're the best team in that division. Now, do I wish that they would have spent a little bit more money and perhaps grabbed you know, another addition to their roster? Maybe I'm not one of those that went, oh, God, we got to get Matt Chapman because I want Christopher Morrell to get a chance. I want right. to see what he can do. And then one of your top three prospects happens to maybe be able to play third base in Matt Shaw. So I don't need to tie my money up in Matt Chapman. Um, Jordan Montgomery, I know everyone was in Chicago today. Outrage. How could the Cubs not sign him? Look, if you told me Jordan Montgomery was a top of the rotation guy, I get it. He's a, he's okay. He's a nice pitcher. You mm -hmm. go through his analytics and through his numbers, solid starter, but the Yankees said they'd seen enough, moved on. The Cardinals had seen enough, moved on. The Rangers have seen enough, and he won with them, moved on. He, he's a journeyman who's a solid pitcher. Kate Horton is not that far away mm -hmm. where I feel like, I'd rather let the young kid play. Do I wish they maybe had put a little more into their bullpen? That was my criticism of them last July, that if you're going to keep Bellinger, and I advocated for that, and you're not going to blow your team up, and you're going to go, all right, show me what you guys can do, then you needed to add more than Jose Quas, a converted position player, to maybe fortify your bullpen, and you came up one game short. Yeah, right. Well, let's, let's, let's start with the bullpen. Um, they did go out and get Hector Neris. You know, they added some other pieces. Luke Little will be in there. But the back end guys, Leiter Jr., Merriweather, Neris, and Al Zalai, your, your feelings on the Cubs bullpen, some MLB.com said they think it's a in top 10 bullpen this year. And it was, I felt like the A bullpen, you know, the bullpen that they used in the close games last year was really good. And then there was a big drop off. Do you think they did a job? of addressing that as well. Yeah. So I, like I'm looking at the list of their relievers here. I like Alzali. Is he a lockdown? Oh man, we're playing for the division title closer at this point. Maybe not. Maybe mm -hmm. he's more of an eighth inning guy, but I'm more than willing as this team is going that way to see if he could take the next step as well. And can he stay healthy for an entire season? Um, I mentioned Jose Quas. He's got a live arm. He's not a lifetime pitcher. He's okay. We'll see. Uh, Mark Leiter Jr. Luke Little is an intriguing name. Mm -hmm. He throws hard. He's tall. He comes from the left side, which the Cubs have desperately needed. So give him an opportunity. Let's see uh, what he can do. Merriweather had a really, really good year last year. That was the guy I thought the pitch lab did a lot with, mm -hmm. and he really took a step. Hector Neris comes from having pitched in high leverage for the Houston Astros. 
I thought that was a really astute signing by Jed. Wait out the market a little bit. Here you go. You might have a chance to close. You might have a chance to be a seventh, eighth inning guy in some really meaningful situations. And then Drew Smiley, who's a really good guy. Drew Smiley's here simply because he has a second guaranteed year on his contract. That's why. they. If he had been on a one-year deal, I don't think they re-signed him. So I think the bullpen's okay. Top 10 in the game, it's certainly not top five. And I feel like when you're trying to win with maybe not the perfect rotation, it's not bad. You want to add one more arm to that bullpen. Well, when um, and, and we can talk about starters, I guess, because it kind of transitions into the, um, you know, into the into the bullpen, because right now here's the rotation. And then Assad would eventually go in the bullpen when Jamison Tyone returns. But just looking at this starting rotation with Tyone on the IL, your thoughts, Steele, Hendricks, Amaga, Wicks and Assad. OK, so Justin Steele soared over his career high in innings last year. I mean, soared past it. Now, history will tell you that guys that go 40, 50, 60 innings beyond their career high sometimes will regress the next year. Now, he's a feisty, tough kid with really good stuff. I think he's throwing the ball well right now. Can he last six months of another year of 170 to 200 innings? That remains to be seen. He has not hit a big payday yet. He's had multiple Tommy Johns. He's a little older. He's not like a 22-year-old kid. And so he needs to be on the mound. And he's a bulldog. And he will pitch through being a little bit banged up or being a little bit fatigued. So let's see what he can do. Uh, Jordan Wicks, now you're getting a ball for a whole season. A yeah. lot different when you roll in in August. Okay, kid, whatever you can give us, go ahead. Now you're getting it every fifth day. What do you do from day one to day five when you're back on that hill again? That is a really tough transition. Got good stuff. We're going to find out. The Imanaga kid who they got from Japan, he's got filthy strikeout stuff. He averaged over two strikeouts an inning in spring training. He's also got a propensity for the fly ball. Yeah. And at Wrigley, there will be days you can crush a fly ball. It's got getting out. But there are going to be other days that thing's bouncing down Waveland Avenue. So <laughs> uh, th there's a chance that he could be a really, really productive part of your rotation. And then there's, you mentioned Assad, solid, not spectacular gutty tough guy he's in there till Tyone's back and Tyone's already been thrown off the mound so I don't think he's going to be far away at least I hope not as long as he doesn't regress and then Kyle Hendricks is the steadying force of that rotation he's never going to blow you away at the top of the zone but he is a consummate professional so I feel like it's a good rotation it's not yet an elite rotation right and you got Ben Brown waiting in the wings you know we saw Kane him Horton. Uh, yeah, Cade Horton, who I, I've heard people say, well, maybe they're going to slow down on Cade Horton, and then you're talking two years. But if you're trying to win, this guy, I think he's legitimately the best pitching prospect that the Cubs have had since Pryor and Woods. I, I'm agree not with you. Pryor and Wood, as far as he's not throwing 100, but you when you put that, that slider in there with his fastball and how mean he is, the guy's good. Completely agree with you. And he's a guy – who I think has a real opportunity. You know, I don't think he's going to be here in April. I don't think he's going to be here in May. Mm -hmm. I do think there's a chance, maybe if there's an injury, there's poor performance by somebody. The weather turns. It's a little warmer. Everybody's got their legs under them. I wouldn't be shocked if he gets off to a good start that he gets here this year. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you're trying to win games, you know, I mean, why wouldn't you, right? Correct. Uh, well, let's talk about the strengths of the team position player wise. And, you know, to me, it would be Cody Bellinger and Seiya Suzuki, the, the the rocks of this team. Do you agree? And how do you think their seasons are going to turn out? So Cody Bellinger, look, I know he wanted the massive, you know, seven, eight year, 200 and whatever million dollar deal. And I had people over at the Cubs tell me, look, we love Cody. We made that clear to him. But if he's getting $200 million or more, it's not going to be here. 
Right. It's not going to be. And we saw, I mean, I don't know if it was a, uh, what's the right way to put this? If it was a big comeuppance for Scott Boris that all four of his top clients all got below market deals. Well, five. I mean, so J.D. Martinez in there, too. J.D. Martinez, that'd be a fifth. So Bellinger ends up getting the opt-out after one year. Go out and do it again. I'm <laughs> not convinced he would opt out because I don't see the market for a then 30-year-old guy, even if he has another solid year going, all right, here's a seven-year deal. And the Cubs are paying him, well, three years, 80 million bucks guaranteed. Pretty good, kid. I mean, wish we all had that. So I really like where they're at and that he came back here because I thought it was a really good fit for him. Like, if you told me, well, he's going to Toronto because they offered a little more money. Is that where you want to be? Because yeah. you had success here. You had really struggled for two years. And now you're back playing the way you think you can play. You found a good situation. The grass is not always greener as long as they compensate you fairly. And I thought they did. Say, ya, I think to say he could win the MVP, I think might be a little over the top. But I love Say Suzuki. Yeah. I'll tell you a quick story. I took my son, Brett, who is like, the single biggest Cubs fan in the world. This kid is, it's insane. I mean, he gets mad when we lose a spring training game. And so I'm like, Brett, it's spring training. Relax. We're going to be okay. I took him to a game last year. We're down on the field. Chris Morrell's trying to teach Brett how to speak Spanish. And this guy's tossing baseballs to him. And I said to four or five players that were standing there, who is the best non-pitcher on the team, offensive player? And all of them looked at me. There were like five guys. It's not close. I go, Bellinger? They're like, no. Say it. He's the best player on our team, and it's not even close. Wow. And this was like late July. And then August, September, He, you go look the numbers up. He was top four in Major League Baseball offensively. Yeah. And so... He's had a really good spring. He's jacked. He is in great shape. And he's a really, really good guy. I think he's a great fit in that room. I think he could have a monster year. Yeah, I, I love the Japanese baseball culture. I, I love that the way that they do it over there, the pride that they take to be great teammates and the the work ethic that goes into being not just a great player, but a great team player, you know? And then, so I thought it was... It was good for the Cubs to get Imanaga as well and just bring as much of that pride and that 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 team building to the Cubs. And I, I don't think you can have enough Japanese players right now. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. Now, when Otani was coming to free agency, it would have been super cool. I'm not going to say it wouldn't have been that if he had picked the Cubs. And then we find out it was really he was never going anywhere other than than the Dodgers. He's an amazing player. All the stuff going on now with the gambling and all that, whatever, that all play itself out. But as a baseball player, he is incredible. His impact worldwide is insane. But there are other guys that come from Japan that you go, wow, that guy's pretty good too. Yeah. I watched him and that guy went, wow, he wasn't even the number one Japanese pitcher in the market this year. That was Yamamoto. Our guy's pretty good too. So, yeah, that baseball culture over there, and they, boy, do they respect the game. They play hard. Yeah, I love that. All right, let's talk about some question marks. Um, and and, I'm, and this is easy, right? Christopher Morrell, everyday third baseman, defensively, you know, what are you going to get from him? And then Michael Bush traded from the Dodgers where they didn't have a spot after they signed Freddie Freeman, Put has put up just astonishing monster numbers in the minor leagues. And these guys are your starting corner infielders. Okay, so I'm a huge Christopher Morrell fan. I, first of all, like him as a human being. Great guy. Great guy. And I like the way he plays. He plays with his hair on fire. And that that's my personality. In your face, passionate, <laughs> be a good dude, treat people right. Like I watched him in the on-deck circle one night. And he's, there's Mr. Ricketts sitting in the seats in the first row. He walks over and shakes the owner's hand before he goes <laughs> up the bat. I'm like, 
I love this guy. And when he hit the home run to beat the White Sox last year to right center, absolutely love everything about him. As Craig Council said, why aren't we giving this guy a chance? I mean, he didn't get here till the end of what, beginning of May last year. I don't know why. They have their reasons, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But give this kid a chance. Let's find out. He hit 20-some home runs with a month in the minor leagues. So let's see what he can do. As for Michael Bush, sometimes you become the beneficiary of a numbers game. And that's what the Cubs are. They mm -hmm. gave up a really good prospect now. Jackson Ferris is a highly touted. Maybe he'll make it. Maybe he won't. But highly touted left-handed pitcher. The Dodgers won't. We don't have to put him on our 40 man. But we do have to put Bush. And mm -hmm. we don't have the space. And we don't have a place for him to play right now. Dodgers are all in, man. They're all in trying to win. That's fine. We'll give that kid a chance. And if it doesn't work, you can go sign Pete Alonzo next winter as a free agent. But I'd rather take a shot on a young kid first. Yeah, right. And you got Garrett Cooper if you need him now. You know, he yep. made the team. And then Matt Mervis uh, as well. Well, you mentioned Craig Council. That was one of the biggest surprises in the offseason. It's been a while since you and I talked. The last time... It was during the season, and at that point, um, David Ross was under uh, a lot of pressure from Cubs fans, and, you know, we were both like, well, you know what, I mean, you, you kind of look at it, and you're like, he's doing, you know, the guys are playing hard, and he was, he was doing a good job, but then the way that the season ended in the bullpen, and, you know, the way that he used the young guys, I guess it really put a lot of, you know, those thoughts in question, right? So they make this move. Uh, and I thought it was a great move, honestly. Your thoughts on Craig Council, and what do you expect with him leading the Cubs? So I, I've gotten to know David Ross. I've sat down and had a meal with David Ross. Like I really like David Ross. Yeah. And I thought guys played hard for him. They did. Uh, when guys, when you get professional athletes who are making whatever they're making, big, huge money, and guys compete and respect the game and play it the right way, the rest of the stuff will usually work out. I thought it was an unusual situation uh, where Craig Council was hitting free agency and he was probably going, he said, probably going to Cleveland. And his agent was my high school teammate, a little <laughs> older than me, but I was a freshman when he was a really good player as yeah. a senior. And I asked him, I said, how did that come about? He said, dude. He said, let me tell you something. We made it clear that we were going to test free agency. Somebody reached out to Jed and said, uh, just letting you know, this dude's going to free agency. And his dream is to manage the Cubs. He really loves that situation. What? Because they were bringing David back. Mm -hmm. This was not an anti-David Ross move. This was a pro-Craig Council move. Right. And... Look, we all want to upgrade. Like the Bears got rid of Justin Fields, not a bad player, not a great player, because they're chasing greatness. Mm -hmm. That's what this move is. Yeah, yeah. Look, and I, I've been around the Cubs a long time. You have too. It's the most unique managerial change I ever remember because within the organization, people still have a ton of respect for David Ross. It's And there's people there that were really disappointed to see him go. So I felt like for Craig Council, it's important for him to have some success early just to kind of solidify the fact that it, this was the right move. Yeah. And if they get off to a really good start, everybody settles in, you know, it's a different way of doing things. Craig is different than David. First of all, people in town, you know, them, the diehard fans on social media hated Ian Happ being locked into the three hole. All the time. I hated it. They hated it. Still they hate. hated it. <laughs> they still and, hated it. You know, there'd be days where Ian hit a home run or he'd come up with a big hit. There'd be days he wouldn't. And I remember I'd do my recaps and the comments, I'd get hundreds of comments. Would you please tell your boy Rossi to take that guy out of the three hole? Yeah. yeah. Well, Craig Council announced he's my leadoff hitter. Right, right. So immediately the way they play is going to look differently to all of us. So I'm excited to see how they look. Yeah, I've heard those same comments. I've gotten them too. Crazy. <laughs> keep them out of the three hole. You'll keep a lot of people happy. All right, final yeah. 
final topic uh, has nothing to do with previewing the Cubs, but I'm asking everybody this because we all have great memorabilia. I asked um, uh, Ron Coomer, what's your, your the best, your favorite piece of memorabilia? And he said, I got a Babe Ruth signed Yankees hat, right? Uh, I, I Rhino gave me a fungo bat that he signed that he used all year mm-hmm. when he was at the Smokies. I, I'd say that's my top piece. Mm-hmm. Uh, Randy Bush said his three World Series rings. What is David Kaplan's number one piece of sports memorabilia? Wow, that's a give great me a couple or give me a couple. You can give me. Yeah, a couple. I got a couple. So when I was doing the radio pregame before I went to TV, 1998, there's a hurricane that hits the Dominican and Haiti, and Sammy was trying to raise funds for his home country. And I was my pre and post game show. They had a special line in the clubhouse. All the media gets kicked out today. That would never happen. I'm in the clubhouse when Riggleman's yelling at the team and Riggleman and I went to dinner. He's like, okay, I know you broadcast in here. When I have something I got to talk to the team about, you can't be reporting any of that. I trust you. I never. He's awesome. Riggs is the greatest. Yeah. And Sammy's locker was from here to right there and so he came up to me brother can you do me a favor can i come on your show i got to get people to donate money and he's in the middle of the 66 home run thing like he had security travel with him and there was like um secret service was involved because oh my god it was it was insanity and i said of course put him on said a bunch of nice things about him, and he brings a bat over to me. He goes, game used, it cracked, and he signed it, and I still have it from the 98 season. And I'm not ever selling that. No chance. I have a Michael Jordan rookie card. I was doing an appearance at a card show, and the guy said, I can either pay you $500 or you can have one of these cards here. Pick one. I'm like, I'll take the Michael Jordan rookie card. Yes. I have wait, it. Under- wait, what year was this? This uh, They gave me the card. So Michael was a rookie in 84, 85. They didn't make basketball cards then. 85, 86 Fleer is his original rookie. That's it. I know. His second year. Okay. And so I have it. I've gotten it graded the whole deal. A million dollar and, card. Uh, this one, I be. think I had it appraised recently. At twelve thousand dollars, okay, twelve thousand. Yeah, twelve thousand. And then the last thing I'll tell you is, <laughs> I'm at NBC before I left there a year ago. I'm at NBC. An envelope shows up, like a padded envelope addressed to me, handwritten. I open it up. There's a letter in there. This guy writes to me. He's, you know, way advanced age. Doesn't know how much time he has left. He's a huge baseball fan, a Cubs fan. Loved watching me on TV, blah, blah, blah. And we have 2016. Well, he'll never forget it. And he said, my kids don't care about my card collection. So I picked the best ones. I want you to have them. And I'm like, and okay. I open up this little like uh, box that was in there. And I'm not kidding you. I look, there's a Babe Ruth card. There is a Ted Williams card. There's a Lou Boudreaux card. Uh, Who was the other one? Another amazing star from way back. Yeah, right. So I go on Google right away and I'm like, that that card's worth how much? The one card was worth like $500,000. Yeah. And it's identical to the card I have. Identical. And mine's pristine in a sleeve the whole deal i immediately call my wife and i said um i don't want you to get like crazy here but i just added up like six cards this guy gave me we've got like well close to a million dollars in cards i mean like who sends them through the mail yeah right so i call up a friend of mine chris ivy from heritage auctions like when there's multi-million dollar stuff he's the guy that runs the auction his company (laughs) yeah and i have done some shows with him uh this show a piece of the game so i got to know him 
He said, do me a favor. Take a picture of those cards front and back. Text it to me right now. He's like, I think you're sitting on a gold mine. Yeah. So I text him back. He's like, okay, we have an office in Chicago. I just called my partner. You need to meet him tomorrow. Be careful with those cards. I think you got the real deal there. No. I'm like, no way. This guy mailed me a million dollars in cards. <laughs> I show up there the next day. I walk in and I'm sweating thinking yeah. this cannot be real. It can't be real. And his guy sits down, puts out a, like a little lens, like a jeweler. Yeah. He, looks, he goes, these are really cool, but they're copies. Oh, man. They were copies. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, that's, man, that's yeah. crazy. I said, is that worth anything? He said, yeah, those are unique copies. He goes, eh, probably 80 bucks for the crew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'll keep them. Thank you. Or you, you hit the lottery for a day. For a day, I thought, <laughs> holy bleep. <I'm... laughs> All right, well, Sammy Sosa came back to town. Are you for Sammy coming back? Or are you, there's, it's just a big divide right now. I, I got to okay. ask the Sammy bat. And then I swear this is the last thing. Okay, so if Sammy Sosa wanted a job, Tom Ricketts makes the rules. He owns the franchise. And if you want to work for him, you got to play by his rules. And I like Tom. I think he's a good man. Great guy. Yeah. The franchise is in large part built by what happened when Sammy was on that run. Mm -hmm. Harry in the eighties, Sammy in the late nineties. Yeah. Otherwise there's a lot of people that became Cubs fans because of that 98, 99, 2000 home run barrage. All If all he wants, and he's told me this, I was in his home in Florida. I interviewed him. He said, listen to me, Cap. I do not want a job. I've got a job. Look at this. I've got money. I just want to be welcome back in my house. Shame on them, them for not bringing him back. He should mm -hmm. be back. I think so, too. It's, it's time. Enough is enough. Enough's enough. Barry Bonds is there at the Giants. I Mark know. McGuire. Mark McGuire Mark was in Are you? Yeah, look, his son's there. I look over. I'm like, they're smart McGuire wearing a bunch of Cubs gear. Yeah, like yes. <laughs> I know. But you know, there's gonna be there's the there's gonna be people that see this and are gonna be mad at us for saying that. They 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 and I respect them, they're Cubs fans. They just are still angry at Sammy Sosa and I just wish we could all just get on the same page and let the guy completely come back. agree. Completely agree. Uh, Cap, tell everyone how they can follow you. They can follow me on Twitter at the cap man and then subscribe. It's free. My YouTube channel is blowing up. I do a, what's called the recap R E K A P after every single Cubs game. So you can follow me there on YouTube just at R E K A P recap. And don't forget you have Gordon on with you. You said you, you've kept the Gordon My guy. You've kept him alive, even though he's covering Cincinnati now. Yep, he still has to cover the Cubbies. That's right. And ESPN 1000, too. It's still doing a show every day. Every morning with Jonathan Hood, 7 to 10 on ESPN 1000. Yes, right, sir. I look forward to seeing you, my man. Yeah, you too, man. Let's get together soon. And, um, and I love having you on and continued success with everything. You too. Anytime you need me, you know. You're my guy. All right, guys, there he is. Uh, get in the comments section, and uh, we'll talk to you. There you go. And a Cubs preview as well.